Go to! Spectacular. And it's so good. Episode 19 of So 2. So 2 with Pete Garden. And Jason Hyam. <laughs> Coming to you. <laughs> Straight from the Russo offices today. Hey, fantastic weekend of finals. What a cracker. What a cracker. Games, close games all weekend. Yeah. And I'm trying, I was trying to, I was, you know, preparing for this, you know, I'm trying to think of other words than referring to things as great match or good match, but so many of them oh, were mate. so close and fantastic. Fantastical weekend, weekend is, of rugby. Which is really great. And yep. weather held up pretty well for us. Um, big shout out to Elizabeth Rugby Union Club for uh, for all of their assistance and the setup and all those kind of things. Like when everything's like a duck on water, right? You know, I mean, they're going like this. Everyone else is enjoying themselves for the rest of the day. So uh, we'll be back up there this weekend too for uh, for another couple of days of it. Absolutely. And uh, you said awesome. big shout out to Elizabeth, but yeah. also from Elizabeth, big shout out to a lot of the clubs. Uh, you know, it, it's, it is a big day. We need a lot of input, a lot of stuff from volunteers and cleanup crew and all that kind of stuff. And uh, going into the end of the change rooms after oh, yeah. after games or between you know between teams coming out and teams going in, teams did a fantastic job of of sweeping up, cleaning up, making sure that they're not leaving yeah, uh, the, the the change rooms in a in a poor state. So shout That's out great. to everybody, yeah, well great done. great work out there, Let's guys. Keep that awesome, up for the, yeah, for the rest of the the thing. And look, it's you know, match it. officials, you know, all the spectators, everyone that came out there. Um, just makes a real spectacle of the whole weekend. It's fantastic. So good. Look, let's jump into some results. Before we get to the finals results from week one, um, we've had the schools competition, which oh, is... Of course, which yeah. Is, which is uh, finished um, just last week with the under-18s grand final the and big, the intercol. The big intercol and grand final double header. yeah. Uh, awesome, but the, but awesome the week before, game. there was the under-14s grand final in the schools competition, which right. Pembroke took on uh, the Southeast Harlequins. Awesome. Uh, Pembroke taking that one out with a pretty convincing win, 55-10. In that match, uh, Pembroke have got a, a couple of outside wingers in the in the under 14s there who are lightning fast. Yeah, right. they, 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 if they get them the ball, it's try. So yeah, yeah, okay. I'd imagine they've got a few under their belt. Yep. Uh, in the 16s, uh, St Peter's and Pembroke are playing in that one. Really close match, uh, 24 to 22, Oof. with Pembroke taking that one out. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's good finals footy, right? Absolutely. You know? Keeps you on the edge of your seat. And then the under-18s game, the Intercol, PAC, or Prince Alfred College. That's the one. Uh, versus St. Peter's College there, um, with PAC taking that one out. No, that was a cracker. It was 3-0 to St. Peter's at halftime. Yeah, right. Like, just, you know, just back and forth, up and down the field, silly mistakes here and there and whatever have you. But um, PAC pulling it together the second half, I think it was... 24-10 yeah, um, final, final, final score there. So, yeah, well done to PAC. Yeah, great, congratulations great, to those teams man. competing in the schools competition um, this year as well and, and uh, all the very best into your summer sports too. Um, all right, look, let's jump on. And um, at some point, these fine gentlemen here in post-production are going to be editing and, and putting some content in here. So we're not, we don't have the, t- the ladders anymore. Oh, of course we, we don't. We've just got yeah. the results. But right, we're so still going to swap something. Bring it in. Onto here the screen here. Here we are. Um, and we're starting with the under 12. So in the qualifying finals. So Saturday was all the qualifying finals. So it's basically second chance games. Oh, if, you, okay. if you lost on the Saturday, you're still playing again next you're week. You're still going to try and get into the finals. If you played on the Sunday, then the winning team gets to play again the losing team they step out of finals all right, cool. and that's right across all grades for, for week one so uh, on Saturday Old Collegians uh, defeated Onka Paringa in the under 12s uh, and then in the elimination final on the Sunday Brighton defeated Adelaide University uh, which then means this coming weekend on the Saturday uh, we'll have the under 12s match will be Onka Paringa versus Brighton awesome uh, in the under 14s, uh, Brighton uh, over Barossa Rams, um, 27 to 7. Um, that match ended slightly early, it was about five minutes to go before full time, um, with a serious injury that was on the pitch. And oh, as well. Of course, it was uh, Jake uh, Tregogas, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, good news, he's fine. He's doing uh, fine. Nothing, yep. nothing, nothing serious at all. Uh, obviously, a bit uncomfortable, muscle soreness or whatever, yep. but um, he's, he's good. So yep. And great. given that that occurred in the second half, then the score stands at, at the point that that match finished. Uh, then in the elimination final on the Sunday, uh, Burnside uh, defeated Onka Paringa 45 to 5. So that means that Barossa and Burnside will head off against each other this coming weekend. This coming Saturday. All right, into the 16s uh, for the qualifying final, we had Burnside and Onka Paringa who were playing with Onka Paringa. 
taking that one out over Burnside. Saturday morning, that was that was that was such a good game. It was so fast. Yeah. The skills and the intensity and the execution of both of those teams yep. was was fantastic. And whoever whoever comes up against them this weekend is going to have their hands full. That's right. Um, which whichever side they're going to be playing against. Yeah. So. Uh, and then on the Sunday in the under 16s competition, so we had Brighton taking on Barossa Rams. Um, so that was the first match on pitch one yes. on, on the yeah, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Um, there's again serious injury that occurred, unfortunately, in that match. Um, occurred in the first half of the game, um, and uh, the you know, paramedics and things attended to it. There was a specific piece of equipment that those paramedics wanted before they moved that patient, given the complaints that were being made. That equipment had to be then delivered to site, so that just sort of elongated that process there. Um, so unfortunately, at the time of the injury, it's about five minutes before half time. Correct. Yeah. Um, Barossa were ahead, ten points to nil at the time. Um, but um, given there was no time remaining for us to be able to continue playing that match, given how long it took for the serious injury, um, then uh, we need to then enforce our match abandonment policy, uh, which has been the same as what we've had all year. All right. Um, which indicates that where a match is required to be abandoned in the first half or before half time. Correct. Um, and that could be for serious injury, could be for weather, could be for any number of reasons. Whatever it is, yeah. <clears throat> um, then uh, the match is deemed to be a nil or draw and competition points applied appropriately. So no competition points, obviously, in finals. Mm-hmm. Um, so then now that we know that that match has had to be recorded as an abandoned match with a nil or draw, yeah. so unfortunately the score of 10 points to nil at the time of that injury doesn't stand, it's recorded as nil all. Um, given there was um, no opportunity for extra time to be played because we even had to push back the following no, match. No, see, with finals, there's so well. many games happening, so there's, there's no opportunity for so that. No, no time for, for the extra time either. Um, so the final result in that match um, was a draw. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a final series where a match is, is completed as a draw, then the team who was higher on the competition table, competition ladder, going into that match, is deemed the winner of that match. So I mean that Brighton um, took that opportunity and, and Brighton were through to, to second chance playing this weekend and they'll be playing against uh, against Burnside. Which is, which is which final. is fair enough. Uh, you know, you do the hard work all season to get yourselves into into a into better a position. Spot. Yeah, yeah. And and that paid off for them. Um, yeah. Unfortunate. Nobody wants to see a, a final end that way. No, with a, not you not. know, with an injury and with a you know with a with a hesitation and having to go to a to a table and a book of rules around yeah. around how it's going to work. But and, look, and obviously, you know, quite unusual circumstances, and this is why we've got these really clearly documented you know, policies and procedures and rules and things around it, um, so that in these unfortunate circumstances, we're not making things up on the spot. We've got to go back and refer to these and, and, and apply them as Correct. they are there. Yeah. So very unfortunate. And, uh, you know, personally, you really feel for both teams. I think, you know, they were out there to, to, to play some footy. Um, but, you know, in the, in the circumstances, this is the result that we've had there. Right, so into the 18s then. Um, we've got uh, in the qualifying final, Brighton took on Barossa in that qualifier with Brighton uh, taking out that match. Um, and then in the elimination, Burnside and Southern Suburbs, a very close match that one was as well. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, it was right down, down all at one point. Right down yeah, to the wire the draw. At the end, yeah. And it was really, only, yeah, in that last play that, uh, that the points got, got ahead there for Burnside. Mm hmm. So that will mean that Burnside will take on Barossa Rams with Brighton going straight through to the grand right. final at this stage. Um, right, so that's all the juniors then. So if we step into the seniors final. So look, even in that juniors, pretty action-packed stuff. Really exciting, um, yeah. And some really quality rugby being played and, and um, a lot of excitement and stuff. And a lot of close games, games through oh, there yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, finals time's always exciting. It's top teams all throwing everything at each other and yeah, yeah. just awesome to see. Uh, right, so into the third grade. Let's do third grade first. Um, all right, so we've got uh, Old Collegians uh, took on Brighton. Um, so this is for, remember, in, in the senior matches, it's top five. So the, the top team that was on the ladder is already through to week two. Yep. And then we had two and three. So that's Old Collegians and Brighton played each other in a qualifying final. Um, so Old Collegians getting the win by one point over Brighton in that match. Um, that means Old Collegians will go on uh, this coming weekend to play Onkers. Yes. Onker Peringa. Um, and it means that then Brighton, in losing that match, will play the winner of the elimination that was played on the Sunday. Correct. Um, so that elimination final was Burnside versus North Torrens, with right. Burnside taking the win uh, from North Torrens there. So it'll be a Brighton Burnside uh, elimination game for third grade next weekend. All right then. Um, into the women's matches um, against. She's really close ones in here as well. The, the qualifying match, uh, which was played on the Saturday, 
um, Southern Suburbs versus Burnside. So again, the, the, the team's on two, two three. Two three, yeah. Um, with Southern Suburbs um, just pipping it at the end uh, with a try and conversion um, to, to take that match out. So Southern Suburbs will play University on Saturday this weekend. Uh, and on Sunday will be um, then Burnside, who will play um, the winner of that the elimination final from the Sunday. So in the elimination game, that was Onka Paringa and Woodville with Onka Paringa. Onka's taking that one out. So, yeah, uh, it'll be Onka's Burnside next week then. Correct, yeah. That'll be good. Uh, Right, reserve grade. So this is reserve grade two, so the bottom half of the reserve grade. All right, yes. Okay, the bottom five there. Um, We had in the qualifiers, Adelaide University um, were defeated by Woodville. Uh, So Woodville getting that one over Adelaide Uni. Uh, that means that Woodville this coming weekend will play Port. And then in the elimination final, that was actually a forfeited match, unfortunately, oh, uh, with right. Elizabeth um, Barossa, uh, with Barossa unable to field, uh, field that match yes. there. So yeah. Elizabeth taking that win. So Elizabeth and Adelaide University will play off for an elimination uh, with Woodville Port playing a qualifying match awesome. this weekend. Uh, in the, re- the top half of the reserve grade ladder, um, we had qualifying final between Onka Paringa and Brighton, with Brighton taking that win. Brighton take that one out, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Brighton will play Old Collegians in uh, in reserve grade one, if you like, this coming weekend. Yep. And then in the elimination final, we had Burnside uh, defeating Southern Suburbs in that elimination. So that means that Burnside will play Onka Paringa in an elimination Excellent. this weekend. Um, then, if we move on to Premier Grade Men's. Whew, here we go, yeah. So, uh, once again, bottom half of the table, Premier Grade 2. Premier Grade 2, yeah. Okay. Um, we had Woodville and Adelaide University in their qualifying finals there, with Adelaide Uni pipping it by two points um, in the end on that, that match. Was very, yeah, that was exciting. Really, was really good exciting. game. So, yeah. that means Adelaide University will take on Port Adelaide uh, Premier Grade 2. Um, and then in, in the elimination final was uh, Barossa versus Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, again, an incredibly close match there uh, with the scores being 18 all till about two or three minutes yeah, remaining. Yeah, not, not very much left. And, yeah. uh, and Elizabeth getting that last try there just to pip it uh, at the end. So that meaning Elizabeth um, will play Woodville in elimination this coming weekend. That's it, Sunday. Um, and then on to Premier Grade. Uh, so the top part of that Premier Grade ladder there. Uh, in the qualifying finals, Old Collegians defeated Burnside 38 points to 37. One point in it. That's the that final footy, you know. A that, lot was, of these matches. That, that was exciting, yeah. Very, very close. So that means Old Collegians will play Brighton uh, on Saturday this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the elimination final that we had, um, it was Onka oh, Baringa. That and was Southern a thriller. Southern. The Jeez. thriller so right the, there, wasn't it? The last, the last game of the weekend, Sunday afternoon, uh, get to full time, 29 all. So in Premier Grade, that means that you play an extra 20 minutes of rugby, 10 All minutes right. each way. 10 minutes each way, run. Um, and uh, after the first 10 minutes of that, before they switched ends again, it was 32 all. Yeah, penalty, had a penalty each, right? each. Yeah, yeah. So we're into the second 10 minutes of that, and Onka Paringa um, were able to just have the extra bit of legs in, in, took, in them. Took that one out. <coughs> took that one out. There, that yeah. one out, 51 to 32. Yeah. So an incredible match that was played there. And I, you know, arguably, um, I think some of those Southern Suburbs players had already played in their reserve grade I match think a number of them had, yeah. So, earlier yeah. in the day, right? So, um, so to, to pull that performance... Um, and to really make Onka Paringa work for, for that win. Uh, incredible final Really sweep. exciting. So good. And look, I, I was really impressed by that, to be honest. I mean, it, they, all of those players, and then a lot of these grades as well, put it out there. Um, you know, hearts and bodies on the line. Um, and which was great. And, and look, there was a, there was a, that was the only match that we needed the extra time for through the weekend. Um, but there was at least three or four other matches, whereas competition management in the last kind of five, six minutes of the game, we were already communicating saying, right, this is a draw at the moment. What's our plan and what do we need to do going forward? How are we going to shuffle next? everything to make it all fit? Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, so, look, if, if week one is anything to give us an indication of what we'd expect in uh, finals footy this year... Mate, week two is going to be just just as thrilling. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, we've got the games also for week two, so we might just swipe that up quickly here Maybe. as well. Throw that on there. So um, in week two on Saturday, we've got a full deck of games again. Juniors are playing for their elimination finals. All oh, right, yeah. And the senior games on Saturday are qualifiers again. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Uh, then on the Sunday, this Sunday being Father's Day, 1st uh, of September. Yes, of course it is. So we've got the morning off. That's all right. Okay, so okay. No, no rugby in the morning. We start at the first kickoffs are at 10 past 11. All right. And it's just the senior eliminations oh, that okay. are being played on the Sunday this yeah. weekend. 
Um, so uh, you know, enjoy your your Sunday morning. Um, all the all the dads out there, happy Father's Day to you for Sunday. Um, happy Father's Day to you, mate. Oh, and to you as well, yeah, man. Hey, mate. come on, it's gonna be good. Uh, and then we'll see you down the rugby. Come down and uh, and enjoy yourself. Watch some Absolutely. watch some cracking Sports. elimination elimination finals. Elimination finals are always it makes it so exciting. Much more passion and emotion yeah. oh. and elimination and it just, it's, you're holding on to that last well, that's that right. last yeah. chance. Oh, yeah. Next, really next week doesn't exist if no, you don't get the win. No, no, that's the season. Yeah. All right, perfect. Look, okay, so that's some of the finals results. Let's um, let's jump into some Ask Rusa. There we go. Hashtag. Hashtag. Still do that, Hashtag. mate. Hey, you still haven't learnt this. I have oh, no idea what you're Come talking on, about, man. Let's ask like, Rusa. There we go. What have we got this week? Uh, okay, Ryan Barlow. Ryan Barlow. Uh, yeah. Asking, are there any dates for the Junior Sevens tournament? Yes. You sure are, Ryan. And we're going to do it uh, Twilight uh, Spring Sevens this year. It's really exciting. So Friday night footy. Um, which is going to be it'll be a lot of fun yeah. uh, for all the juniors and that's uh, back end of October that's and right. the, the first Friday in November so uh, a lot of fun there that's all being locked in information yeah, should had. should, uh, should be up to clubs already my by the time this comes moment. out so, uh, so the dates for that according to uh, Lisa as well who I spoke to before this yep the junior club sevens will be the 25th of October all right 1st of November and the 8th of November. Excellent. So doing three weeks um, of Twilight Rugby, so it'll be on a Friday evening. Um, fantastic opportunity for 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s uh, to get your 7s teams together. That's it. Um, and and jump in on that. Fun. Excellent. And awesome. we're also looking at that with the, with the three weeks there, hoping to, as best we can, you know, do sort of a northern, central, south type. Uh, get it. Everybody, get everybody right. have something close <clears> to Something close by. Yeah. yeah, correct. Awesome. All right, so... Um, moving on to Owen Potter. Owen Potter Rugby. Here we go. Pete's moustache is looking fresh. Fresh, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Jason is uh, styled for me this morning. Awesome. So, um, That's a good job. I like it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Ari Cahill. Erica. Erica? Yep. Erica? Erica Hall, mate. Yeah. Sorry, Erica. Oh, That's all right. Erica Hall. Sorry, Erica. Just glasses work, um, mate. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you want to switch? Yeah, well? I probably the, should uh, too. It's all good, mate. All, all right. right. Uh, what are the official rules for injury subs and tactical subs? All right, in our competition. So yeah. I know this came up a couple of times on the weekend. May have, You may seem have. to have been biting your lip there. Is there something you'd like to say, Jason? No, just just uh, nothing nothing at all. So in, at all, just, uh, in, uh, in, in our competition, and, and the same as what we've run throughout the season as well, so we try and keep that consistent through finals, um, we operate with interchange. Okay, so depending on how many interchange you're permitted for your age grade yeah. um, or division, if it's senior divisions, um, you either have um, unlimited, if it's under 12s and 14s, All right. or you have uh, 12 interchanges, except for reserve grade and premier grade men's, who only have eight interchanges. Right. So effectively, as a player comes off and the next player goes on, it's an interchange, uh, which is recorded as a tactical. Um, that's irrespective of if the player is assisted from the field, if the player is holding their elbow as they come off the field, anything like that. Um, that opportunity is still for that player you know, to potentially be able to go back on. Cool. Okay. Um, how did Jason, this is from Chinning Tatum, how did Jason get a yellow versus Barossa? Oh, just uh, there was a, a, a mall that took place and I had my arm, uh, the assistant referee had judged me to have my arm uh, too high on the player who was carrying the ball in the mall. Um, so, yeah, that was the yellow card. And that's it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Jalen McKay wants to know, is there a sevens tournament this year? Yes, so I already chatted about the juniors. Yes. Uh, but there was also the seniors, the uh, Fijian Association of South Australia, FASA Sevens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's uh, 26th of October. 26th of October. Um, so, right. yeah, and they'll have their, their lunch and launch on the 21st of September at the Cooper's Owl House. So there's an event on our, on yeah, our Facebook page. Yeah, and that'll be, that'll be the first uh, Wallabies match, too, in the uh, Rugby World Cup. Yeah, too, World Cup. So the World Saturday. Cup opening ceremony is the, is the 20th. The before, so the 21st yep. is all. Uh, all the exciting games getting kicked right. off. Show so, Fiji too, that yeah, game. Is, so be, good one. Get down to Cooper's Ale House, get your be, tickets. Could be a decider about who comes through oh, that, that group. So uh, yeah, absolutely. hopefully the Wallabies get up. Um, all right, so Chad Bowker. And there are also similar questions from Cohen Peters and Tommy Greenshields. 
Um, they're asking, what are the predictions for the weekend slash predictions for grand final? Who's, who's going to win all the age groups and 18s and whatnot? So, so um, without without chewing off everyone's time, uh, we thought we would try and give predictions for this coming weekend um, for 18s, women's and premier grade. Yep. Um, I think with the closeness of the matches to try and predict a grand final winner just now. <laughs> this far out is Would, is would be remiss, you know. It's it was difficult enough coming, yeah. coming up this weekend. So, we'd had a look. So, so um, who's in the 18s? So, in the 18s, this weekend if I can get my piece of paper so you just put a report for us there yes there's plenty of great. reports thank in. you mate. So much ha, ha, appreciate ha, ha, ha. it alright so we'll have there's Burnside and Barossa who are playing in the elimination final for under 18s this weekend oh that's it is going to be it's going to be exciting it's going to be really exciting um, I think I'm going to go Barossa Go Barossa on, on that this one. one. Yeah, I think I'll go Barossa. I think they'll, they'll, um, they'll have the fire in the belly. Um, certainly coming into that one. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, with Burnside on that one. Let's um, let's see who pips it at the end cool. of that match. That'll be good. All right, let's take a look at the women's. Um, so if we're looking at the women's, uh, so the qualifiers will be Southern Suburbs and Adelaide University being played on Saturday. All right. <laughs> Uni unbeaten all year. Uh, I know Souths uh, got, got Souths some, are coming strong. I know oh, Souths okay. are coming back and they're, they're okay. playing good rugby. They got some players back this week as well. I think who didn't play in the last round against right. Uni. Yeah, but oh, tough, tough to go against Uni at this yeah. point. I think uh, well, I'm gonna back the back the unders and I'll go Southern Suburbs. You're gonna go Souths. Yeah, all go. right, I'll go Uni then. All so right, there we go. All and then right. in the elimination, so this is the Sunday game for the women. Uh, we will have Onka Pringer and Burnside on that one. <sighs> Onkas are playing some great rugby. They are, there. right? Only, only two years into that team developing. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing to see how many of the women were out there warming up and things like that before the match. Some of those women in their squad would have missed out playing. Correct. They're not, the not playing, but they're out there warming up and getting involved anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they, uh, they're, they're getting stronger week in, week out. Yeah. Um, However, bunnies, always been a, yeah, the always. bunnies have been consistent all the way through the they year. Have, yeah. uh, they've, they've been playing some really good rugger. They've got a good squad out too. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, look, I'll go, I'll, I'll go on Capringa. Oh, I was going to say, if I go against the bunnies, uh, I think uh, Lisa, and, Lisa and Sophie might stab oh. me in the eye. So uh, still, still, still love you, Lisa and Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go bunnies. bunnies. I'll go bunnies. I'll go bunnies. Can't go against it. Okay. That's good. Uh, then let's have a look at uh, Premier Grade. So Premier Grade 2 and 1. Let's do this nice and quick. So, All right, yeah. Um, in the qualifiers, it will be Uni and Port. I'll pro- I'm going to go yeah, Port. You have to go Port, don't yeah. you? So I'll go, uh, I'll well, go I, Uni. I don't have to, but I will. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> and, uh, and then in the elimination, Elizabeth Woodville. Uh, well, again, I'm involved there, so we'll just go Lizzie. Right, move on. <laughs> I'll back Woodville. Come on, Woodies, let's go. Uh, right, okay, and then uh, in Premier Grade here, we will have um, Old Collegians and Brighton. That's going to be a hell of a match. Right? That is going to be a cracker. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two back lines going at each other is going to be really exciting. Yeah, and I think Brighton might have the forward pack. We were talking about that, do we think? Except do, Luke, uh, Luke, is it Luke Clifton? Oh, Luke, Jeez, he was showing some offload. Of, oh, I remember him in eight teams, right? He was, he was sharp. In, in, his, in his first year in uh, in seniors, old Luke, he was uh, trying to tell everybody he was a number eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> none of us believed him, but um, you know he, he has the skills. He's yeah. got a bit of pace. He can get around the park. Um, and then you got you know you still got you still got the old boys, and uh, you know Gary Mann is always gonna is gonna yeah. add impact. Uh, Jack. Jack's back. Yeah. All right. So yeah. he's his shoulders healed. He's ready to go. He's back, and so lineups are always going to be solid. I don't know if we can split um, that one because even oh, in the elimination mate. as well, we've got Anka Pringa and Burnside in the elimination fi- final for Premier Grade. Um, well, I tell you what. And the other one, I'm going to go Old Coles. All right. Well, I'll go. I'll go Brighton. Then. All right. Done. And then uh, in the elimination, Burnside and Anka Pringa. Anka Pringa, geez, had a. At a hard fought slog. It's tough. 100 minutes of rugby. They've em- emotionally, they've really invested. Although we had the under 12 training done, um, mm-hmm. done at, uh, at Onkers last night. Yes. So I was down there and saw, um, saw Haggis and, yep. and, and Troy. Uh, they just had a gym session. They were feeling fresh and ready to go. So, yeah, great. you know, that's, that's also going to be a, that's going to be a hell of a game. Yeah, it will be. Um, uh, look, I'll go Burnside on that one. Oh, only, right. only because they were so close in their match with Old Collegians. They right? were. They years. really, really were. Um, all right, Onkers. I got Onkers then. Okay. Okay. Excellent. There's our predictions there. Um, heading into this weekend of finals anyway for a few of the grades. 
Um, all right, so Bonnie Meredith, she was asking if there's any chance of an under 18s girls comp coming to Adelaide. So uh, is that a, 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 a. We're wondering if that's club. Club, club under 18. Club so are we going to introduce under 18s for club? Yep. Or, or if that's a sort of a state representative or a representative national tournament, yeah. national competition Some being able to be held here? So if it's if it's age grade stuff, um, we're actually, and I'll get to this in a minute, um, Lisa wanted me to mention some things around the female development stuff. All right. Um, so if there's enough interest off the back of some of the activity we'll do this year, We'd love to introduce some, uh, you know, sort of under 18, 17, 16 style women's rugby. Awesome. For for a competition. Fantastic. Next year. That'd be really, really um, good. In terms of representative for tournament style for under 18s girls? Uh, possible. Um, I'll, I'll straight up, I'll say, you know, Brittany Staniforth at Rugby Australia. Yeah. Um, she's, uh, she services and she's, uh, she pretty much ran the under 18 girls this year Mm -hmm. Uh, we'd love to host it in Adelaide Uh, I I think you know we'll we'll advertise what we've got to got to got to give when uh, when the NRC2 come down Mm -hmm. and uh, definitely Bon I think um, I think there's there's definitely an opportunity for us yeah I don't think there's a set place where they're holding that at the moment it was in Canberra last year this year was in Sydney so with a bit of luck we can uh, we can put in there and that'd be really nice to have uh, have a, a big big national competition down in Adelaide again it's yeah, been a while yeah. yeah 2016 I think we had the national sevens, sevens yeah, yeah. down here right. so yeah it'd be really really good yeah good all right Joel Pepper asking why aren't premier reserve grade games a live stream feature good question and you're not the only one asking questions why your, why your grade isn't live streamed correct um, um, a lot everybody, of conversation everybody passionate everybody wants to see Have you know the their there, yeah. brother sister mother father daughter son um, out there playing we'd, uh, we'd love to stream Absolutely. everything yeah. all yeah. games A and B field all yeah. the way through uh, but obviously there's a number of number of things around it's, it. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a bit cost prohibitive, um, you, know, uh, you know, just the resourcing required to be able to do that many games and things like that as well. So the stance that, that we've got just now is that there's been a match of the round, mm-hmm. uh, which has been a premier grade match that we've streamed throughout the year, throughout from, all the minor from rounds. Round one, from absolutely. round one, absolutely. Um, so we've carried on that theme to continue streaming the premier grade matches, which mm-hmm. is premier grade two and premier grade run yes, yeah. throughout the final series, uh, with the exception of the grand final, uh, where we also live stream the women's match in the, for their grand final as well. Um, now, whether that's um, what we want to do next year as well, um, that that's up for, for for debate and things like that too, and we, we can we can put in for that. Um, but you know, from a, a cost perspective, um, you know, as a not for profit organisation and things as well, we've really got to understand that if we're investing into um, you know something like live streaming, which is a great product to have and a, as a nice to have and, and promotional, then that detracts from something else that we potentially could be doing that that maybe has a higher return on investment or not, right? Um, the other thing is that you know, despite the fact that we've uh, we've done it okay over the last couple of years as a, as an organisation, um, we are somewhat reliant on um, some of the funding from Rugby Australia, who mm-hmm. support you know all of the state unions. Um, and come 2020, we don't know what that's going to look like yet when there's national broadcast deals and all that sort of stuff that come up for grabs, right? Absolutely. So, so the, what, what their income is directly affects what our income is. So we've yep. got a, we've got a, we've got a, or our board has a responsibility for securing financially securing the future of our union, um, and we wouldn't ever want to get to the point where you know we're looking at potentially insolvency or something like that, which is when we'd need to go to all of our members of our union to ask them to put their hands in their pockets and things like that, right? Which, which is not, not a position we want to be in. So no. that's part of the responsibilities we've got around it. That's that's the decisions why and things like that. That's how we'll continue running the final series for the rest of this year with Premier 1 and 2 um, having their live stream games for the next couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, and then the women's and Premier grade teams in the uh, in the grand final. And, and once again, Again, as we've mentioned before, you know, if if there's something that you really want to see happen in in 2020, mm. uh, speak to your CAG representative at yeah. the club. Yep. Uh, we've we've had uh, we've had their details up in previous podcasts. So you know, 
they're, they're there and available. And if you if you you know if there's anything that you want to happen in 2020, yep. go see your category representative, and that's how you get it done. Absolutely, for sure. Um, okay, and then uh, I'll look, I think that's about it from Ask Grocer actually. If we look at these here, so we've had we've joined in a couple of questions together. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's our Ask Grocer panel done. But I do have some messages from the wonderful Lisa Kenny on the development side of things. So All Lisa right. Kenny. Also the um, what is it? The National uh, Women's Development Squad Manager. Yes, of course this she year. is. So she's off to Fiji with the Wallaroos development team. Yeah. So that's really exciting. In fact, uh, we should get her in to have a chat about that at yeah, some point. So definitely. we'll get Lisa on in the next couple of weeks and have a chat to her about that. But a couple other things here. So we talked about the club junior sevens. We've also got high school sevens that we run um, each year as well. That's going to be on Friday the 20th of September. So that's the Friday after senior grand final. That's a great day. It's an awesome day. Schools come out, get out of maths class for a day. Yeah. Uh, come down and, uh, you know, come down and throw a rugby ball around it all yeah. day on a Friday, turn it into a long weekend. Um, there was... You know, it's, it's the day the Rugby World Cup starts. Yes. So, yep. you know, there's all kinds of exciting things oh, happening happen, that yeah. day. So that's for 16s and 18s. We're looking for nominations from uh, boys and girls teams Absolutely. to enter into that. So if you're at a school and uh, in those age brackets for 16s and 18s and, and want to get involved, then uh, get in touch with Lisa and get your team nominated. Absolutely. Nominated for Absolutely. It. The more teams, the better. The more rugby we have, the better. Uh, and the other one is that Lisa wanted to talk about the female rugby gala day that we're going oh, to have. Okay. Yes. So this is postseason, Saturday the 19th of October um, location yet to be finalised and locked in but we've got a couple of options that we're working with there um, but that female gala day is um, we're looking to have um, so it's for all female participants and current non-participants you know so bring a friend bring somebody you know anything like that bring them along to get a taste and an experience of awesome. rugby on that day that's um, it for, for the real young ones so under 12s and under or sorry under below under 12s I should say we'll have some clinic and some fun games and all those types of things mm-hmm. there um, potentially looking at doing some 12s 14s um, and 16s in a 7s competition so bringing all of those players in those age groups together um, and forming some you know maybe some regional type teams and we'll, you know, we'll run some seven so you have some fun to not only do some clinic stuff but to put some of that into practice and, and play some rugby too and then potentially um, yet to talk to our state's uh, coach for the state women's but maybe have a possibles probables or a friendly um, 15s women's game as kind of the, the highlight of that day as well fantastic uh, but looking to have uh, potentially have the current Wallaroos captain some big names, some big names on the, um, on, on the schedule there to have yeah. to come down and be a part of it. Yeah, yeah so to come down and be a part of that as well. So uh, following that then is when the Club 7 starts, the weekend after that. But the Club 7 start after that female um, gala day. Yes, Junior 7s. So, so any of those kind of teenage um, age groups, um, we'd love to get in that Junior 7s to have some um, some female you know competition there as well. Absolutely. So that's going to be the start off and we'll, we'll lead it through there. That's really exciting. So messages from Lisa. I think that's our finals um, wrap up from last Absolutely. weekend and coming up into this weekend. A bit Brilliant. of Ask Rusa. Last one, there was a uh, Rusa community. Hashtag oh, Rusa yeah, community. Hashtag Rusa community stuff. Get your uh, photos and your videos and things up through there. We'd love to see some more content there, but we do want to give a, a shout out to Alex Woolwin. Alexander. Yeah, Alex Woolwin. Uh, he does a great job out there, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Loads and, he does and loads stuff. of photos yep. uh, that he gets up um, and about. So, so he's, he's popped one up uh, for us this week with the hashtag Rusa community. So thanks very much, Alex. But we're looking awesome. for everyone as well to, uh, to get in there and um, get your photos, get your photos in we, we want to see what's going on yeah right I mean we, we see as much as we possibly can but we don't see everything now, speaking of the photos right I want to run a little competition this week just for fun all right all right because we're we finals doing? we're all having fun and things like that all right what kind of comp I want to throw to I want to throw out there a meme Competition. Oh, the old memes. Memes. The old memes. Okay, memes. Oh, right. For memes. any of you that don't know what memes are, they're the you know kind of a funny photo where somebody's put some sort of funny comment across the top of the photo. Awesome. Um, yeah. So it gives you an idea of what we're looking for. So in the comments of this video that you see on the platform that you're watching on, um, add your meme. Create one. Add it before the next time we have a recording. So before next Thursday, let's say Wednesday. Um, pop it up there. Pop it in the comments. Uh, and we'll pick it up from there. And just as a little bit of incentive for any of you budding meme generators uh-huh. out there. I know Pete loves a Pete loves a meme. I He's do got love a meme. Old, the old meme generator on his phone there. So uh, we have oh, what you got there. Pete? We have here for you um, the um, the same uh, match balls that we're using through the final series. 
awesome. This is up for grabs for the best meme. That's as, uh, now that's the premium uh, premium ball. Now the, the Matrix is. V Pro. Yep. Uh, from uh, from Rhino. So one of those up for grabs. You want to win that that ball? Let's uh, get your memes in and uh, and let's uh, let's see what you can do. Make Great us laugh. Stuff. Really, at the end of the day. That's right. Yeah. So look, good luck coming up for the teams who are competing this weekend. Um, and look, have some fun, not only on the sidelines, but get your memes into us too. That's it. All the very best. See you at finals. I'm going to find a happy Father's Day.